What up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the SVR Podcast. Uh, first off, everyone, how's everybody doing, man? I hope you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and be sure to be okay with yourselves. And secondly, if you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel, turn the notifications bell on, uh, in case if you haven't been notified when I upload videos. And yeah, today we have someone who who is from London, England, also has um, mental health issues, uh, ADHD, and he's a musician who, as of lately, I've been done research based on who he is. Like he's been making meaningful songs, which is great because, you know, we want more artists who want to express themselves through art either way for today's podcast i'm gonna have to introduce you his name is endless music yeah welcome into the podcast how we doing man good man bit nervous but you know we uh we go through we do it we devour we destroy bit nervous but feel like i can do it I hope so too, man. Um, so, uh, endless music. What I have to do with you is ask you ten questions in regards about mental health, music, your experience, how you got into this whole idea of making music, and you know, giving initial thoughts and your insights about industry and music and success, and you know, what's your coping of way of presenting your art through your issues. Without any further ado. Are you ready, Endless? Yeah, uh, whilst the whole one thing kind of caught me off guard a bit, you said I was from London. I'm like six hours away. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where I live is like six hours away. Those, so if the British people who are watching it, they will know Manchester. And I just want to say big old Manchester in a second. So. So, first question comes into mind. We will be talking about your humble beginnings. What all started out in, with the whole idea of you, you know, uh, making music in the first place. The first question I'm about to ask you is, what sparked your interest in making music, man? So, what sparked my interest is, originally, um, I was learning how to freestyle. as like, kind of like a joke. Um, but then... Uh, I slowly started to realise that I can do a lot more with my music than just freestyle and make a couple of wacky ass bars. So I took the ability of learning how to freestyle, took it back home, worked on it, and then thought, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to try making my own music, and I just it kind of suit the bill. So that's how that kind of came along. Now, have you ever been experiencing a lot of things in music, such as, you know, recording, uh, mixing, mastering, and stuff like that? Have you been experiencing that? And, and so how it was? Um, yeah, I got, um, I've got qualifications in uh, lyrical work, recording, mixing, mastering, vocal work, uh, producing. I've got qualifications in all of that type of stuff. So. You know, um, and all that came around because of my college, so. Ah, I see. So you were studying into college online, right? Or at, in person? Because, you know, if you were studying, like, studying in person, it would be a lot of hard for you to understand it. Well, the first, so the place I went to was for people who struggled with, like, ADHD and everything else. So... It's kind of like, you help us, we'll help you. And um, they sent me to a placement one day. And at this point, I was already messing about with bits of music. I was already posting my own mini freestyles. And um, I ended up using the studio at this place. And it just kind of became my main place for recording and producing my music. Mm. Nice, 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 nice. You've been on a grind. You being consistent with uh, recording uh, music sessions. 
Uh, at the moment, um, I've not been recording as much due to uh, like personal issues and not being in college, but hopefully in the next few weeks, I'm back in the studio provided to me by college yet again. And hopefully I'm back on grind. I've got quite a few ideas of songs. And I've got an album or EP idea. So hopefully when I'm back in, I can put that into fruition and I can make it happen. All right. Let's move forward to the second question. Now, just like every musician out there, there's been a lot of times when um, they've been facing a lot of black parts. Like when I mean black black parts, I mean, in a sense, like they don't know what they need to write about. They don't know what kind of subtitle they think of. You never know if this like it matches the puzzle or not. So, um, have you ever been experiencing writer's block when trying to create music? And if so, how did you um, overcome it? Uh, I see. I get writer's block quite a lot. Um, I am more of a freestyle artist than a writer. Um, so when I go in the studio, I tend to just time a beat, lay some bars down, and then from there. I try to write it, so I take my favorite parts, and I will try to write my own bars. But usually I, I have people around me. If I'm trying to do it on my own, it's a lot harder. I can never really think of bars. So if I have, like, my friends around me, they can sometimes go, well, wait a sec. Maybe if you put this in, or if you try to make this line a bit longer, or say this instead, you know, trying to help me improve. It just kind of makes it easier. So that's how I usually sometimes get around my writer's block, is by having those who can help me around. I mean, if you think about freestyles, uh, freestyles are very hard to do, depending on the person in particular. See, when it comes to freestyles, it's a, a lot of harder to sometimes understand what they're trying to go for based on a the topic they were going for so a lot of times it wouldn't make any sense and sometimes it does yeah like i was obviously when i first started it was from freestyling and around the time i started i was struggling with mental health so that's what my freestyles was mainly revolving around was mental health and a lot of other stuff so from there i started to try and write music revolving around that so in the sense that you're using your freestyle as a choice of a weapon, you use that as a creativity, a way to uh, diffuse it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I said to try and use it as a way to diffuse it all. Like I said, you know, freestyles are very hard to do. Yeah, and it, it's like, one thing I also realized with freestyle is it also helps a lot with mental health. Because, say, if you're going through a really, really rough patch, touch wood, hopefully nobody is. Um, as obviously, like, my personal life, I can sometimes struggle to open up to people. So if I find a sad, like, a, so, a, a slow, sad beat, I can then freestyle how I'm feeling because it's completely random. You don't know what you're about to say. And sometimes I feel better, sometimes... I say the same stuff, but it's a way to connect with yourself on that emotional level. Moving forward to the third question. I have seen a few uh, people who I've been interviewing. They've been um, inspiring a lot of these artists based on their, you know, their style and the content they're, they're sharing, you know, because that's what draw inspiration comes from. Anyway, um, for yours, truly, because I'm, you know, I have checked out your songs, as I said, because I've done, I done my research. Let me guess. My cat told you, told you to listen to Haunted. Uh, yeah, I listened to the uh, the popular one, and I listened to the, the second and third and the fourth song. What draws your inspiration when it comes to making meaningful, meaningful music? Because there must be an artist out there that I'm sure that kept you in question, huh? So this is the artist I I looked up to. I love their their music. I love their style. <laughs> so, one artist that I kind of draw inspiration from, and I'm going to sound like a broken record because a lot of people hate this guy, MGK. 
I say it's a lot of inspiration from MGK. Um, yeah, I make that music, but I dress similar. Um, but his some of his songs like Glass House, Hollywood Hall, um, Five Thirty Six Six Six, all of them just kind of like I don't know. It's, it's kind of like I relate to a bit of it, so it also kind of inspires me to do some other type of music, but in my own style and in my own unique way. The way I'm thinking about it, based on what I listen to a lot of music, is I don't really see MGK vibes at all. I think I've seen more of NF vibes. I, I do enjoy a bit of NF, but I tend to try and do a bit more of like, not MGK, but I try to kind of bring in that type of vibe because I resonate with his music and his music has obviously probably helped me through a lot more than to say my own because it's someone there who can kind of like relate in a way because he's had a really really rough upbringing himself and just with my own personal life it's kind of it's kind of like someone you can relate, not completely, but in certain ways. So, it's, I do try and bring that type of vibe in my own way. So, it's not going to be completely the same, but I do try to go away to be top with the NF vibe because it's like slow rap, but then some of it's aggressive. And he's known for doing aggressive and like that. Hmm. Yeah, like I said, man, I just never seen MGK vibes. I always seen, I already said it myself, I seen uh, NF vibes based on the fact that the, the, the lyrics and just, you know, the, the flows you're choosing. That's just the flow of the boat all the time. That's like my main flow. And if to say I'm looking at going on YouTube, looking at sexual scene typings, which um, he's a uh, quite a famous British rapper who's also well known in America. Uh, he does like melodic drill type of music. So if I say go on YouTube social sexual scene typings, my voice will kind of change to kind of like drillish type of music. If so I bring different vibes in different ways. I mean, what it matters is be you, be diverse, and stay consistent. Yeah, it's, that, 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 that's what I'm aiming to do. Which is a good thing, you know? You can try a lot of different styles that maybe when you grow up with these genres, it will, be, it will benefit you from, you know, not just always rap. You can also try to do a lot of things. Yeah, it's, I still haven't found my main genre. I definitely don't rap, but I have. I still haven't found out what style of rap yet. Um, so I've obviously I've done sad rap. I've done like fast aggressive rap. You know, I've done like melodic drill. Um, I think my next genre to try is uh, rock rap. Mm. Oh yeah, rock rap is gonna be sick. Furthermore, to the fourth question. Now, I have asked this many times to a few artists. There, you know, they told me what what the stage name is because you know how it is with people getting to selecting, you know, their musical stage name and just. And like I said to the last interview with Blackheart, they give me a lot of things throughout like it, it wouldn't mean just one thing you know but it might mean something that maybe it's hidden in the in, in the meaning the message behind it and i'm sure it's something that can be related to something in regards to that name so what's the meaning behind your stage name endless music metaphorically so there's no particular meaning behind it and um, I could tell you the original boring story, but um, I'm just going to round it up. 
uh, basically, so uh, when I first started music, um, I went by Little Weezy, um, searched it all, found out Little Way, went by Little Weezy every now and then. Um, and then I was just as I started uh, posting my freestyles more seriously, um, that kind of like recalled by progression. Um, one of my mates just said, You should be called Endless. Like endless music, so I was like, oh, all right. So I searched it up. No one, nobody went by that name, and I was like, all right, sweet, yeah. I'll go by endless, endless music. There you go. Mm. When you put endless, you're thinking of like your music is not ending yet. It's not. You're gonna be always be I'm gonna active. Be active. I'm you're gonna always be here. Yeah, like, and I say that, like, I always like to say my bars are never endless. Like, there's no stop in my bars, no matter what. Like, yeah, my bars might not be as strong, but uh, it's good. Mm. And at the moment, I'm stuck in a repetitive phase where I'm saying the same bars, where I'm basically just freestyling the same shit. But, you know, I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to slowly come out of it, so. But, yeah, I, I like to think my bars are never ending. Like, I like to think my bars are in, and always going to be around for people to try and resonate with. Just as long as it doesn't repeat a cycle where you repeat a bar that obviously you already said it in a previous song. Don't get me wrong, I do want to start referencing like other songs that I've made and like artists I've worked with or I'll reference their songs that I was speaking to Black Art about this. And I said, I might sometimes we use a bar from another song and work it into the song I'm writing just to kind of reference it or say reference the song that you've made which I like more which is I've kind of resonated with and use a bar from that but work it into the song so it just sounds natural you know and it doesn't sound repetitive mm -hmm. but I don't do it with every song just do it with a song here and there so it's not you know kind of switch it up a little bit, which is it creating a side idea, which um, is basically from a POV of kind of like another version of myself who's more like improved. And basically just ripping the shit into myself. Basically just point out every single flaw of what I'm doing it from. So, I've been trying to get out of it for a while, but I just, it's like I keep forgetting, so I keep doing it. So hopefully, so this song idea, if I do go through with it, is, I hope it will be a permanent reminder to me and to everybody else, don't in this cycle, otherwise you won't improve. Mm. Yep. So that's basically what my day needs to be. Is that it's always going to be that it's always going to be a reminder to everyone: don't be in this cycle. Get out of it as quick as possible. Fifth question. Of course, us we are all underground music artists. I'm also a musical music artist for based on the fact that I don't have a big following and is that my space is pretty small for you know based on the fact that how how much i get interact with the you know music community when hip-hop speaking you know um and a lot of times most of underground music they, they come from they coming in like they just blow up this quick and they debut in um uh, in mainstream music which um, not a lot of artists are doing it for the fame or for the money, really, but they are still independent, what they're doing behind the scenes. It's not like it's going to be a big of a deal that you're going to the carpet and just literally, boom, there you go. Uh, for, you know, in your perspective, um, Endless, what makes underground music unique and how does it uh, differ from mainstream music? So what I think about this is that underground rap, yeah, because it's not classed in mainstream. 
you can fire them up while you need people, you can fire them up while you need music. And sometimes I start to think people are just sleeping on the fact that a lot of these other crowd artists that I'm um, doing it for themselves. A lot of them are like doing it because it's what they want to do, doing it because it's what they love, you know? Maybe they'll trace them around it. So I don't now putting their hard earned money, time and effort into this trying to make it a full time thing. And then they can keep investing in it and keep investing in the fans. And some people sleep on the fact of fucking I don't know, it's it's a weird topic, but a lot a lot of people definitely sleep on it and definitely sleep on a lot of the artists like say uh, a guy who I want to work with called Wiki Nightmares. Uh, a lot of people definitely slept on him but if they actually listen to the past they were really fucking smart so a lot of, it's, it's definitely a way people sleep on underground rap and um, people just favour mainstream music more now it's, it's very it's very one sided in my opinion but one thing when we're not gonna do is selling our souls Never. Nah, you know what? I had a debate with I. I went on a little rant about this earlier when I was reading. I had about this conversation before. If people want to claim you are selling your soul for the money you're claiming, you believe in bullshit. It's not about riding the wave of a certain thing. It's about the time and the dedication you are actually putting it in to it. Like, if you ride, if you spend two years every single day, 365 days for two years straight, writing a song to its most potential it has, and you are constantly telling yourself, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's a 50 50, yeah. But if you can get it to bring out the potential, you think it has and other people that tell you it has, you're probably going to have a higher chance. Yeah. It, it's not about selling your soul, you know. All that's just bullshit. But it's about the time and the dedication, you know. And see, when I said selling a soul, because um, they wanted to risk it all. They wanted to do like the other people in the industry would do. Because um, the fact that, you know, most artists that got to underground scene and then want to blow it up by fast because of something, one thing that completely put it, put it them into the pedestal. Yeah, it's just, I, I, I feel like selling you is also a last resort. Like, hypothetically, say if you have tried, literally every single market is the every single genre and you can't get to where you want to be and you try like every single style of music possible and then I feel like selling your soul would be a viable option but it's a very 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 last resort way of making it the lifestyle will be changing because there, there's been a lot of people who have been tragically have been going through a tough shit because of the fame and the popularization they got in, in the, their mind. For example, a lot of ours like uh, Chester from Lake of Park. Yeah, from- he's, yeah, Chester, Robin Williams, you know, uh, it was good. Thing. I mean, MGK tried putting a shotgun bullet in his mouth last year. He shot to his brains out. Um, you know, it affects people in a lot of ways. Some people positive, some people not. But it's all about how you deal with. It. You know, look at Keanu Reeves, for example, actor. He's he's got to have to stress with remembering lines, remember where he's got to be, what he's got to do constantly. He had a very very tragic life. He lost his daughter, he lost his sister and everything else. And then he lost his dog. 
po. Fucking, okay. he's still very humble, you know, like you'll see people be seat on a subway. He doesn't live a very, very, very flashy lifestyle, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's all about how you deal with it. It's all about a balance, you know. You never know if there if it's something that is worth risking or something that will turn out to be the worst case scenario. You feel me? Anywho, um, you know, I could tell the way how you cope is really fun to do. However, though, is there a particular non music activity that you find especially relaxing or rejuvenating? Oh, chilling with the boys. Getting high, chilling with the boys, freestyling, like, because there's never really a time I'm doing anything to do with music. If I'm on TikTok, music's popping up. If I'm not on TikTok, I'm freestyling. Or if I'm not doing that, I'm playing games and listening to music. Like, oh, if I'm not doing play games, I'm just listening to music. I'm always doing something to do with music. There's always something to do with music going on. Even if I'm not listening to my type of music, I'm listening to my boy's type of music. So, you know, there's never really a time. Because even when I go see family, like my little brother and my sister, they play music. So there's never really a time that I'm not doing anything to do with music. You mentioned uh, video games. I'm also a gamer like myself. I love video games. I love action platform venture games. Like, I love old school games. It's what I usually cope with most of the time compared to, you know, triple A games. Yeah, like, a lot of my, um, my favorite type of games. I mean, I tend to play the top three at Spider Man because, like, I would just go out and say, I would look Spider Man bad boy. So. I played them a lot and I've just started Borderlands 3, so. Yeah, old school video games are really cool, man. That's what we grew up with at the time. I do like Crash, uh, Crash Bandicoot, that's uh, a good one. And Spiral. Me? Oh, um, yeah. Like, what inspire me to interview people? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Hmm. Okay, I mean, I never get asked in this podcast because, you know, I usually ask people. But um, what I got, you know, into interviewing with people that it's encouraging. Um, and it's one of those things where it's socialization is what inspired me to do. Like, I love to socialize with people. It's com- communication part of it that helps me, you know, calm down. You know, if I don't communicate with people, I would just go select to the next person, you know, to interview. And interviewing with people is a good way to, you know, get to know people with their boundaries and their hopeful beginnings. You know, to understand where they're coming from and to understand their preservation. I get what you mean by the communication uh, and getting to know people. It's just... It's a, it's a very good way and over the years obviously podcast has become a lot more than what it used to be like it just it, it, it mainly used to be like what you hear on the radio in the car and over the years it's become so much more I feel like when when I do a podcast with underground artists and other underground people and individually it's it's not all about getting radio play and all that it's more about just, you know, have a good time and speaking and understand their values and their insights. Yeah. It's, it's, it's always good to get to know somebody's values. And, you know, like, it's just, it's a good way to get to know new people and meet new people and be more yeah. unique. Yeah. You know, you want to build like long, long life friendships and even me somewhat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just got a little bit of track here on because I was about to ask the next question here. So, separate question. Now, we have talked about uh, the, you know, few questions about 
the whole idea of soul. Can you tell me your opinion? This is just your opinion. I mean, even if people can agree and disagree in a certain way that it like, uh, I can't I can disagree, so I, I don't fuck with it. You know, after all, you can still engage. You can still, like, get along. Regardless about having, you know, differences about opinions, you know? So, what your thoughts on the concept of selling one soul for success in the music industry? Yeah, okay, very last resort. And if it's still selling souls, it's last resort. Like, you shouldn't have to sell your soul in order to make it. I'll get what you want. It's rather, to, to, so I don't mean this to offend anyone or, you know, to trigger anyone. If you're willing to sell your soul, you uh, like, if you're willing to sell your soul instantly as soon as you start, and it is showing you don't have the time and your dedication, and it just shows that you're not, left, like, you're not willing to put as much work in as anybody else. You know, good example, little pulp, huge gang. Selling your soul is a very, very last resort, and selling somebody else's soul is just horrendous. Yeah, I mean, it is the last resort, and it's a risky one, especially because, you know, you'll be dreaming like, like this, huh, one day I want to get in the industry, and one day I want to get in the carpet, and paparazzi, and I want people to get to know me to talk, get talked a lot, and especially getting radio play and all that shit, too. <laughs> Yeah, in my, in my eyes, at the moment, I can't put the time and the dedication into it because mm -hmm. it's all provided by college. But as soon as, I, as soon as I get the opportunity to put everything into it, all the time, all the dedication, I'm going to take it because, like, as I've always said, I would rather grind 20 years, 10, 20 years, and then blow up and then. I could say I have earned it, and then just buy it all over the Thing is, though, you have uh, you have you're in a small space, and you can't really blow it up one snap of finger. <laughs> uh, unlucky people have uh, done that by fast. It's just it's just stupid. I don't get it. I don't either. Eighth question. Now, of course. A lot of us underground musicians will be get called underrated for a lot of things. We get called underrated for our work, our talent. It's just a, in general recognition. Like we don't get a lot of recognition that we needed to beforehand. In a sense, like you know, we don't get talked as much. We don't get talked about how. How creative we are in the process of putting a lot of passion and, and how we deserve to get promoted a lot more as us musicians. So, in addition, um, analyst, what's your definition of underrated? Your definition. My definition of underrated is when to say you have a audience of a hundred people and. 95 of them are saying that, well, no, it's like, so put it this when you have an audience of 100 people, 75% of them are saying you are shit. Yeah. So even that 25% are saying you are good. Yeah, that you are underrated. That, in my eyes, is underrated. But you can never really tell how underrated somebody is. Especially if you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. People might take it as a negative way of saying underrated, but I think underrated is something great because, um, you know, you get called underrated and you, you're like, this person needs a lot of more promotion. He needs to get promoted a lot, bro. This, this guy has talent. He, ha he has the, all the work that he needs. Like, he needs to be promoted at this point, man. Show him some love. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong, like, underrated is mainly a good thing. I see it as a good thing, but I just kind of want to spread the word so it may get sadly too. It's just no people on both sides. Like, well, I think it, like, it was mainly pointed at the fact that if people are going to say you shit, there's also going to be people that say that you're underrated. Kind of like what you said, you need promotion. 
it should be out there. But you're always, it's always going to be a divided audience, but it's never going to be equal. I mean, one time is like if you don't have haters, you're not going to get what you wanted, you know? But it's hard because, you know, you have so much positivity on your interactions with the fan base that you have. I mean, it's small, and which I get, you know? But they yeah. still, there's still enough care people that will, you know, definitely will help you the best way they can. Yeah, and sometimes people just got to remember, sometimes your biggest haters will be your biggest fans, so. Indeed. Um, we have two more questions, and then we're going to wrap it up in the outro, which uh, it's going to be a lot easier for you to, you know, edit, and I've also edited that as well. So let's move forward to nine question. Now, you did mention uh, something that you have collaborated with Blackheart, obviously. Matt Blackheart, you know. Um, yeah. On a, on a few occasions. On a few occasions, yeah. On more than two. On, uh, I think it's like three times. Yeah, I know. But who are artists or musicians that you'll be interested in collaborating in the future? There's a lot of underground artists there who they are from different countries and they're very like diverse and you know, complementing with the style of, you know, it can be about musical mental health. It can be musical m harmonic. So, obviously, don't get me wrong, I'd love to work with my head. Uh, there is potential for something there. Uh, we both have been exchanging DMs, uh, talking about it. Uh, so, uh, you've got Matt, you have got Wicked Nightmares, which is obviously he's no longer doing music. Um, and who else? My boy. I've got to mention my boy, Mist, which, if you have a this is control, he's on that. So, the three people who I would be interested in collaborating with. Him. I'm sure these features will have a, some uh, surprise appearance and there will be some familiar play, uh, familiar uh, faces here. Wink, wink. <laughs> yes. All right. Hey, bro, you want to get on a song while you do? All you got to do is ask. I can get you something. If, uh, if you want to make that happen, we can make that happen. If you send me a link to this store, I'll give you a list of Definitely. After this, I will let you know. Ten question. This is the last question to uh, do before you know sending up the outro. So there's been times when a lot of people have been struggling with their mental health. They're you know uncontrollable with their mind state, and they are struggling too much to the point where they need some guidance, and some communication, and some help for kind of people who truly care about you as a person and those who have mental struggles to deal with. So what's the most valuable piece of advice you do give to someone struggling with their mental health? One, you help one person, you help everyone. Two, there's always going to be a light in the darkness. You just need to find it. Even though it's going to be hard and rough, deep down, you can do it. Number three is life isn't always going to be perfect. But as long as you keep that strong mindset and keep what's close in that heart, you can do anything. And three, uh, oh, four, sorry. You don't need a thousand motherfuckers. You just need three people you can take over a country. Like at the end of the day, if people are struggling, life is always going to be rough. And I can say that because I got, I got kicked out at 18. Yeah. So I can personally say life is really like life is fucking tough. And there's always gonna be people out there who have who are going through worse than I am. But as long as people keep that strong mentality and keep what they have at heart and value every minute, they will be just fine. Like people keep your heads high up at the end of the day. If you're struggling, yeah, try and speak to someone, even if it's a dog. You know, dogs, cats, dogs, cats are what they're going to tell anyone. You know, find ways, music, art, drawing, games, 
the different white people. Mm-hmm. Definitely worth forgiving. I mean, life is a marathon to run every single opportunity possible. Yeah, yeah, life is just a long sprint. It's just a long road. It's just about getting to the finish line. Facts. Facts. You know, you, you, you've always, you, you, it's about jumping the hurdles. Life, you're going to need to take risks. But as long as you stop threatening you or others, you'll be just fine. Yeah, just keep grinding and stay consistent and true to yourself. That was it, folks. Um, endless music. If you have anything to say towards the outro, it could be anything. It doesn't matter what it is. Short, sweet, long, whatever. Uh, are, uh, will you be able to do so? Yeah, I can do that. So, I just want to say thank you for having me. It's been great. Uh, I definitely have fucked up. Um, but I also just want to give out a few shout outs. Black Heart, the Wicked, Mist, CBR, ND, um, obviously Big Up My Boys, and Josh Day. But I just want to tell everyone that we're going to make it and I'm going to do something big this year. So watch out. You want to try and stop me? Go ahead. Also, attention. Coming soon. Don't know when. It's coming. Keep your eyes peeled. Yep. The links will be social media and stuff that will be in the link description below if you guys have enough time to follow him. Go ahead. By any means. He needs... And if you don't, it's fine. I'm not going to chase your validation. <laughs> All I'm going to say is, yeah, at least give my music a try. And if it's not for you, you don't have to follow. You don't have to listen. You know, I'm not that type of musician. I haven't found my genre yet. I haven't found my genre of rap. I'm still exploring. So there might be something for you. There might be not. If not, give me feedback. I'll explore more. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for watching this SVR podcast. Be sure to subscribe. <laughs> Hit that like button and turn the notification bell on. Let me you let me know guys know who you want me to interview next, because there's a lot of people on this line um that wanted to be interviewed. Who knows who it could be? It could be a musician, uh comedian, a wrestler. It doesn't matter who it is, as long as you know, keep it professional, how it is, just stay engaging and enjoying um in the interview to, you know, understand people from their background and in order to get to know them from their standpoint. Not as a, just a musician or anything, but as a person. It's So, yeah. I will see you guys into the next episode of the SVR Podcast. I'm out. Peace out. Later. Ciao. I got the things, babe.